Okay, so welcome back. Um, now, in the previous video, we started giving some thought to how we would make a device that would simulate the movement of a computer mouse to fool your computer into thinking the mouse is awake and moving and it doesn't go and uh, blank the screen. And in the first video, we talked about using, um, you know, a wristwatch to to put under the mouse and simulate motion. We you talked about using a smartphone and some GIFs or videos, but those really were kind of uh, fairly unreliable. You know, they might be 10, 10 or 20 percent reliable, but um, what we're looking for here in these next two videos is we're going to develop a device that is pretty much 100 percent re reliable because it actually does what the mouse does and it has motion between the mouse and the mouse pad of the table and we're going to simulate that so it should work pretty much 100% of the time and um, the way we're going to do it in this video we're going to look at a Raspberry Pi uh, we're going to figure out how to program it and simulate and we're going to use some uh, servo and then in the next video we're going to do the same thing but we're going to use an Arduino, a small Arduino Nano and we're going to build a little box like this with a servo inside and we're going to fit an Arduino Nano inside so it's a nice portable little device. Um, in this video we are going to program a Raspberry Pi and here I've got a Raspberry Pi 3B but you can use any Raspberry Pi and uh, we're going to program it to produce a varying duty cycle PWM signal. Now why are we going to do that? Well this is a um, one in a series of videos where we're going to look at Raspberry Pi and also Arduino to control some servo motors. And the way you control the servo motor is by feeding it a control signal that looks like this. It's basically a PWM signal. And let me zoom out a bit so you can see. This is basically a 50 hertz PWM signal. And I've got this programmed to change the duty cycle uh, randomly every two seconds. You can see it's shifting the duty cycle every couple seconds. And um, what we're going to ultimately use this for is to control the servos and we're going to use it for a mouse jiggler. So basically for your desktop computer or whatever computer if you want your mouse to keep active so that your screen doesn't blank, uh, we're going to set up a little mechanical device using the servo to make the mouse always active. And what we do is we feed it this control signal, this 50 hertz control signal with varying duty cycle, and each pulse width corresponds to an angle for the uh, servo motor. So the motor will turn from 0 to 180 degrees and this is kind of randomly turning that servo motor and it will we'll use it to um, be a effectively a, a mouse jiggler. And we're going to do the same thing with an Arduino. But you can see that what I've got here is a um, Raspberry Pi 3B connected via wireless LAN and in a previous video we showed how to control this over the wireless LAN or Ethernet with your desktop computer. So all I've got plugged into this is one USB power cable coming from a USB battery bank and I'm measuring using this little USB device, I'm measuring voltage and current and you can see that the Raspberry Pi is drawing about three tenths of an amp doing this and I am, I am controlling it via a Python script on my main computer that is being fed through the Wi-Fi onto this um, Raspberry Pi. And I'm measuring the GPIO pins, two pins, to see what um, the Raspberry Pi is producing. And ultimately we'll take this control signal and feed it to a um, uh, servo motor to control it stepping different angles. Okay, so here we are in our Windows 10 uh, desktop. We are accessing and controlling the Raspberry Pi via Wi-Fi. You could do Ethernet, whatever. 
Um, I recently uh, posted a video showing how to configure the Raspberry Pi so you could use VNC uh, to control it over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And you can see here I've got a VNC viewer window and here's my Raspberry Pi on my Windows desktop. So the goal here is to write some code on the Raspberry Pi and execute it so that it generates a PWM signal that will ultimately control a servo. It will change the angle of rotation of the servo uh, based on the code. Okay, so um, first of all, we're going to need to understand the GPIO pins for the Raspberry Pi. So what we can do is you can click on the terminal and enter pinout. And this will give you, for your particular model of Raspberry Pi, it will give you a graphical depiction of the pins. And you can see here I've got my Pi Model 3B version 1.2. And at one end I've got the USB and the Ethernet connectors. And at the other end I've got the GPIO. And here on the corner is Terminal 1 of the GPIOs. And it's 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 40. Okay. Unfortunately, the actual GPIO pins on the 3B aren't marked, so um, you have to look at a diagram like this and figure out what you got. So what we're going to do is we're only going to use, initially, we're going to send a PWM signal out of two pins on this GPIO. One of them is ground, of course, and the other we're going to use... Uh, pin physical pin 11 which is GPIO 17 all right so we're going to send the 3.3 volts out it's going to be um, PWM and in this case it's going to be a 50 Hertz PWM signal but in our case we're going to control a servo so it has to be a specially designed PWM signal and we'll get into that in a bit but Really, I'm just going to have a connector, an output between this pin 11 and maybe pin 39 ground, okay? And we're going to send PWM to those um, pins, okay? So that's uh, what we're going to send out. Now, we're going to have to write some code on this Raspberry Pi. And, uh, we're, of course, we're going to do it in Python. And... Um, what we're going to need is a library to help us with this. Now, um, since we're going to be sending a PWM signal to control the position of the servo, uh, it would be nice to have a library that knew about servos, right? I mean, so for example, instead of saying, okay, I need a pulse width of two milliseconds, uh, it would be nice to say, no, I need an angle of 180 degrees on the servo because I don't know what the, the corresponding pulse width is, right? So it'd be nice to have a library where you could put in the angle that you want the servo to go to directly. And thankfully, we have it. Um, there is a library that is um, built in to Raspbian. It's called GPIO0. All right, so when you install Raspbian, you get this GPIO0 library, and it has a ton of functionality, all right? Um, so what we're going to need to do is figure out what parts of this library we're going to need to use in our code to make it a lot easier. And if you look at this um, GPIO0.readthedocs.io, it's got a list of all the functionality. It's really an uh, amazing bit of software. And one of the great things is if you look over here, how to install it, basic recipes, which is basically copy and paste these code bits. Uh, depend, you know, if you want to light an LED, um, if you want to use a button, there's just tons and tons of different what they call recipes, but it's just... Um, uh, boilerplate uh, copy and paste code you can use for all kinds of things. And if you look down here, we got motion sensors, light sensors, distance, and servos and motors. So we're going to use a servo um, bit of code from the servo part of the library. 
Now, if you look here, you can see there's a servo, but there's also an angular servo. And that allows us to specify an angle. So basically, we have very simple code that says, hey, Raspberry Pi, send out a PWM that moves my servo to angle of 30 degrees. And it will do that, okay? Um, so really nice. Um, so we're going to need to to figure out how to load the library and how to access this Angular Servo code. All right. So if you click on Angular Servo, it comes up with this list of all the parameters and um, all of the functions. Like you can set it to the max position, the mid position, the minimum position. You can specify an angle directly. Um, really wonderful um, um, bit of code to make it so much easier to work on servos. So <clears throat> now that we've got that, uh, I'm going to jump into Genie. I'm going to use that to write the Python code. You can use whatever you want. Um, but I've got a, a pre-made bit of code I've already done in Genie that does exactly what we want. And you can see these first four lines are basically importing libraries. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, you can see these first two are from this GPIO zero library. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm just looping through continuously and I am setting the servo angle to a random value between zero and 180 degrees. And I'm also printing out each time it comes up with an angle, I'm printing that out, okay? So this is basically all the code you need to do what we saw on the entry on the opening segment where it's randomly producing a, an angle, a PWM signal with a pulse width that corresponds to the angle of the servo between 0 and 180 degrees at 10 degree steps. All right. And then so it's, it's setting it to an angle between 0 and 180 sleeping for two seconds and then doing that again, it's doing it continuously and just giving us a random value between 0 and 180. So um, here in the beginning, I'm using from GPIO 0 library, I'm importing the servo, which really we don't need as long as we got the angular servo. servo. Um, the angular servo allows you to put it in uh, directly into degrees. So from GPIO0, import Angular Servo. From time, the time library, we want to import sleep so we can cause this to sleep however many seconds between uh, settings. And also there is a random library that we're importing so we can pick a random um, servo position each time, okay? So what I'm doing is I am I am making an angular servo object called S and I'm using GPIO pin 17 we talked about and I'm saying the min angle is 0 and the max angle is 180 and this comes from this uh, library where we can say min angle max angle and you can specify what those will be and we're saying between 0 and 180 so now I'm not going to retype this. If you want to copy it, just hit pause on the um, video and just copy it. But it's pretty straightforward. And again, if you have any questions, just go to this GPIO zero library documentation. It's really wonderful. And again, it's got a lot of uh, pre-built recipes and a lot more information about um, how this all works. Okay, so now we're going to run this and we're going to look at the scope and um, here we're printing out the angle uh, that is defining the width of the pulses. So we're going to see the printed angle and compare that with the width of the pulses. So let's run this guy and here's the printed angles. And you can see on the scope it corresponds to a varying pulse width. So you may notice that the actual pulse width only varies between one millisecond width and two milliseconds. So that difference of one millisecond corresponds to an angle of the servo from zero to 180 degrees. So
only one millisecond of variation is required to um, cause the servo to go from 0 to 180 degrees. Okay, so now that we have some theoretical Raspberry Pi code to operate our servo, let's take a look at a real-world servo and see how it works. And we may have to modify our code a bit, depending on how ideal this uh, servo is. So the servo we're going to use is a very common, very inexpensive servo. You can get on, you can get a pack of them for like two dollars each on Amazon, and it's a um, it's an SG90, very common servo, 5 volt servo. And again, you just give it a um, control signal, pulse width modulated control signal on one of the wires and it will uh, run. Now here we've got three wires to the connector that comes with it. And I've got a um, orange yellow one and that is where the control signal goes. The middle wire is our 5 volts DC and the black is ground. So you've only got three wires to connect to. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this thing up and see how it works. Now you can see here I've got my Raspberry Pi and I've got the code running that basically um, sends a pulse width modulated 50 hertz waveform with the pulse width that varies. You can see it's going from one division to two divisions, back and forth. And one division, if you look up here, is one millisecond. Two divisions is two milliseconds. So it's running from one millisecond to two milliseconds pulse width, which ideally uh, would make the servo run its full 180 degrees. Now, what you will find in most of the code you see uh, most of the assumptions are in the code in the libraries that this one millisecond to two millisecond pulse width corresponding to a full 180 degrees um, change in uh, position of the servo that's the assumption that is made but in the real world we're going to see that maybe that's not uh, the way it is so I've got one of these servos hooked up on my bench and I've got a little breadboard here just so I can have the wires coming out for the servo and also for the um, oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the control signal to the servo and see what happens. So you can see the servo is at vertical and then it looks like it's fully horizontal. And as the pulse width changes, it, it looks like the servo is only going 90 degrees, not 180. And you can also see that that pulse bounces around sometimes. You can see the, the servo jiggles. So there's a couple things we're going to have to figure out um, for this servo uh, if we really care about accurate um, position information or angle information. Now what we're going to do in this project is just a very simple um, mouse jiggler so we don't really need um, to have accurate values. In fact, this this existing 0 to 90 degrees should work fine. But what we will find here is that for this particular servo, again it's a very inexpensive servo, um, I've done some tests and I've had to go down to about 0.5 to 0.7 milliseconds for this minimal um, pulse width. And then instead of 2 milliseconds for the maximum, I had to go to maybe 2.5. So in order to get this thing to go 180 degrees, you may have to go from 0.7 to 2.5 or whatever. Now you can try that with your own servo. I've tried it on like three servos and it's all about the same. So don't assume that, you know, the code in the Raspberry Pi or the Arduino that assumes um, full um, rotation is one millisecond to two milliseconds pulse direction. Uh, maybe not. And thankfully, much of the code you'll see to control the servos allows you to specify, um, even though it defaults to one to two milliseconds, there's also a separate function that allows you to specify a um, pulse width for minimum and maximum. Okay, so now what I've done is I've adjusted the code so that instead of the default values of one and two milliseconds pulse width,
it goes from about 0.7 milliseconds to about 2.4 milliseconds. And you can see that the travel of the um, servo is almost 180 degrees, but not quite. So again, don't expect too much from these um, cheap servos. Um, you also don't want to go too far beyond their limits because then you might, uh, if you know, if you hear a grinding noise, you might start um, drawing a lot of current and, and hurting the servo and maybe drawing too much current from your pie, whatever. But um, just in case you need to have a really accurate value for angle, you might want to look elsewhere and not one of these um, inexpensive servos. Okay, so now that we've looked at a real-world uh, servo and how it responds, let's look at our code, our kind of uh, ideal code that we generated in, for the Raspberry Pi, and see if we want to make any changes. Now, here's the code we had, and we import the libraries. We set up an Angular servo, and we like the Angular servo because it allows us to enter angles in actual degrees. Um, so, Angular servo, um, pin 17, and our loop was you basically set up the angle, you set the angle of the servo, and we are picking a random angle. So what we want to do is every once in a while we want the servo to kind of make a random movement just to show the computer that, it, that the mouse is awake. And we, we use the random function, and we had a range from 0 to 180 in steps of 10, and we set that as the angle. And then we printed the angle out to the console, and then we slept, and we kept doing it over and over again. Now, in, in the final application, what this is going to do is this is going to sleep for, you know, maybe a minute or two, because we don't need the, the mouse to jiggle every two seconds. You know, it can wait for a minute or two because, you know, the internal sensor um, of the computer, you know, checks every few, you know, five or ten minutes. So all we want this thing to do is, is make a little movement every minute or two. So we got to think about, well, in the time that it is just sitting there idle, we don't want any signal going to this um, servo, right? We want it to be totally dead. And we saw before with the real world servo, it kind of jiggles a bit. And I, I think that's because of the the uh, noise from the, the PWM signal coming out of the Raspberry Pi or whatever, but we just want to shut it down in between movements. So we're going to have to add something here to shut down the um, control signal when it's not making a movement. Okay, so that's one thing. And then we also said that um, this 0 to 180, this angular servo method, while it's nice and allows us to use angles, it assumes that the total range of movement is from is with a pulse width of one to two milliseconds. We saw with the actual one, it might be like 0.7 to 2.5 milliseconds. So we might want to change that. Um, you don't have with this; it doesn't really matter. Like I said, because we just want a small movement of the um, servo, so the mouth knows that it's alive. Um, but if you want to be more accurate and you want to give it more range, um, we're going to have to think about changing this. So now we got a couple things that we're going to want to consider changing. So I've got a new code, a modified code, and let's take a look. And here's the modified code. And instead of using an angular servo, I'm going back and using a regular servo. And the reason is because you have a little bit more control um, of the um, servo control signal. And we're using a sleep time, and we're using a random number to give it a random movement. So now I am setting a servo object instead of an angular servo. And again, it's going out to pin 17. And here it allows me to set the minimum and maximum pulse widths. All right? So now I've set the minimum pulse width down to 0.7 milliseconds, and the maximum up to 2.5 where before it was one to two. So it gives us more control. Now in our loop, um, since we're using this servo, it doesn't take it in angles. So what we have to do is we have to convert the value of the position to a minus one to plus one range, okay? So instead of a zero to 180, it's gonna be minus one to plus one.
And to get a random, what I've done is I have taken random like integer values. So I've taken minus 10 to 10 with steps of 1. So it gives us the same range. And then I am, since that's an integer, I'm converting that to a float and dividing by 10 or multiplying times 0.1. So this range of R will be in the desired range of minus 1 to 1, okay? So it's, it's doing the same thing, but it's now using it in the terms that the servo likes. So I set the value as minus 1 to 1 to give a random position of the servo. Now, the other thing we need to consider is um, what we want to do is we want to give it time to get to its new position, and then we want to shut it down. We want to make sure there's no control signal going uh, because we're going to have it sleep for like a minute or two. So here I'm giving a, you know, I, I am setting the value, printing it out to the console, and then sleeping for two seconds, doing nothing. And then I'm, I'm using that two seconds to allow the servo to come down to its new position. And then I am setting the servo value to none, okay? And if you look in the code for the um, uh, servo code, there is an option where you can say none, and it basically sets the control signal to zero. The PWM value is zero. So now it shuts it down, and it's going to sleep for, we've got it five seconds, but we're probably going to go something like, ultimately, 200 seconds, or maybe 300 seconds. Um, so it's going to keep going and putting a new, you know, every 200 seconds, it's going to give you a new value to um, simulate mouse movement. Okay, so now you can see the results. Um, you can see that the servo is going through pretty much the entire 180 degrees, and it's um, giving a signal for a couple seconds, then going dead, and then gives another signal, and it's straight up and down, and it gives another signal to move it, goes dead, and um, this is going to simulate um, motion of the um, mouse. Okay, so now while the using a Raspberry Pi to do this is doable, you're probably not going to lock up a Raspberry Pi just to do this um, mouse mover. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to use an Arduino Nano and we're going to put the board inside of this little box and we've got the servo in here, and you can see it's going to control this servo um, to simulate mouse movement. And it will be a nice portable device that um, we just have to plug the um, power into it, and we're good to go. Uh, and, of course, the code's going to reside on the Arduino, as opposed to this Raspberry Pi, where you've got to connect it to the computer. So, in the next video, um, we're going to um, take a look at how we're going to program an Arduino and put it in here and make it kind of a standalone device. So hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.